the competitors, which we'll release that later. Um, and this is a concept study of a possible washing machine. And by the way, this is a nightmare of any of our engineers. I'll try to explain you why. If you go mentally to a washing machine and ask a kid to draw a washing machine, they'll draw, give you these drawings. In the United States, they give you this. In Europe, they give you this. And they're pretty much washing machines as we know them. This, by the way, they're conceptually very different. This one goes sidewise. This one goes up and down. This one has a heater. This one doesn't have a heater. So it's very different conceptually. This one needs warm water. The Europeans go, hi, oh, you need warm water for a washing machine as a connector. Uh, but anyway, that's the mental model of a washing machine. We think we know washing machines. We, trust me, we don't know them. But we have, of course, people doing innovation in washing machines all the time in our washing machine company, right? So, <laughs> dear Mr. Washing Machine Innovator, you know, dear Mr. Engineer, what would you like to do in the next generation of washing machines? Or something really that brings in the ecological aspect and do something good when I wash my underwear. So, w w what is, how do you do something good when you wash, I think you're doing something good when you wash your underwear. <laughs> <anyway. laughs> <laughs> It's nice, uh, but <laughs> how, do you, how do you make that happen? Well, less energy consumption. That's very frequently said, right? Less water consumption. Is that good for you? Okay. That's one of the prime aspects of what our engineers in washing machine engineering and innovation do. What else? Less noise. Is that good too? You like less noise, yeah? And uh, less water, less energy consumption, less noise. And shorter cycle times. Is that okay too? That's what comes out if you ask people. People are stupid, they say yes, whatever he says. I'm just nodding. And, and our engineers are stupid, they go yes, we like that, and they start working on shorter cycle times. Now, reality is, none of these three things will sell you a washing machine. None of these things are competitively interesting. Let me give you one example. I have constructed a washing machine which uses 250 kilowatts a year. Is that a lot or less? Or less? Right there, I mean. Good. Yeah. We have no clue. We have no idea. Well, I have constructed a washing machine which uses half a liter of wa water per cycle. Is that good or bad? You have no idea. Consumers have no idea about consumption. They go by ratings. And the A rating, by the way, you achieve with even very bad machines. Pretty average machines now. So anything that is really above average, where you want to innovate, does not sell. Because people have no clue. Half a liter would be very little. They use much more. And what I said in energy was far too high. So, but we have no clue. Now, if I tell, you know, when, once you look into people's lives and go where washing machines are, you find out most people tend not to hear the washing machine. Or even worse, they like listening and hearing the washing machine, because it gives them indication when the thing is done. We have, trust me, we have visited more than 20 households and did in-depth studies on where the washing machines is, and do all that. We frequently do that, visit of users. And we ask them, do you like, you know, a quiet washing machine? At first they all go, yes. And they say, where's your washing machine? Well, it's in the basement. I don't hear it anyway. <laughs> it's terrible. Once you go to consumers, you find out that la not well that noise reduction washing machine is not a selling argument at all. If you buy a new it rings and tells you it's finished. Yeah, if you can hear it. We have seen people that put their babies to sleep on washing machines when they cycle because the babies liked that like that. It was like a rock. <laughs> and by the way, less cycle times. How is the standard washing cycle of, of a human being? You stuff the stuff in in the morning, you switch it on, you go to work and you let it sit there. Have you ever done that? Yes? How would a faster cycle time help you? Not at all. So we do spend 25 million a day, US dollars, but we seem to have not a single clue on why we spend the stuff on R&D, at least in the case of washing machines. Now, this washing machine you see here is the opposite. It has enormous cycle times. It is based on the assumption that you could by ne by ne uh, biologically engineer bacteria, which nest in plants, that eat dirt. So this is a waterless washing machine. And there is bioengineering that can do things like that today. 
and um, of course it takes a while. You put in the stuff here in these bins and you lower them, it's an enormous piece. And you had to take out the bin and put in another drawer and do all these things. So it's not easy at the moment. But it is a concept that could work. The problem is after about five days it's gone because the bacteria die. You cannot keep it sustained. But it's a very interesting concept. But it's a nightmare of electrical engineers. It has no electricity power. It has no moving parts anymore. They studied the wrong thing. They should have studied bioengineering. And therefore, they hate that. They hate the idea that you could do it. Now, if you look for innovations which are profitable or non-profitable, and I took that from the German version of the Harvard Business Manager, you usually have innovation types that can be called old products, facelift, brush up, improvement, replacement product, breakthrough innovation, and even a vision or mission change. The management appreciation for old product, innovation is high. For facelift, medium, improvement high, replacement medium. Breakthrough innovations, which are really high level innovations, which change totally the way you do build a product like you have seen with the washing machine, it gets little management appreciation. And if you change the vision or mission of your company, you get a lot of resistance from the management action. If you ask the management, give me your profitability expectation for this category, they say 7.3%, 6.8%, 14.9%, 15.1%, 9.1%, 3.2%. So they have a low profitability expectations for these categories as well for these. The true return on invest, if you, and they did the, this, empirically look at innovations introduced in the industry, you'll see that old products get 5.2% return on invest. Product facelift, which you see frequently with cars, at about 3% or 4% return on invest, 6.9% on improved products, replacement products, the next generation products get over 12%, breakthrough innovation about 15%, and the vision mission change about 20%. So this is most profitable, but it is least liked by the management and has the biggest difference here. Of course, it is least liked because people argue, well, yes, with a few vision mission changes that worked, like Apple, when they invented the iPod, right? And they made themselves from being a computer company to become basically an entertainment company because they're making more money now on the iTunes store than on the pods themselves, or at least for a while they did. Now, no, the flop rate is not higher in these categories than in these categories. Of course, with old products, there's no flop rate. But the flop rate is about 69%, 67 61%, 64%. So the same flop rate, it is not true that vision changes or changes of what you do in your company, fundamental breaks or innovations, do have create higher flop rates. But then if you look at the R&D budget spending, you can see 19% here, 31, 22, 16, 7, and 5. So we heavily underspend structurally the most important areas of innovation, which are the fast-reaching innovation categories. And it is really hard to talk to the management and tell them, guys, you may need to leave your comfort zone and leave the areas of what you do today. You may have not only to change your product, but the way of doing business, your business model. And therefore, I was heading for a while a group called Business Model Innovation. So changing the entire way you do business, which is arguably one of the hardest ways of doing innovation. But if you look for the successful cases like Apple, it is also one of the most profitable ways of doing innovation. You see that in the internet a lot. Let me give you one example from the music industry. You know, yes.com, it's a website that shows you all the time where music is played in the radio, in the internet. So basically, if you go to that page and go for maps, you'll see millions of songs spring up every second. So these are all the songs played in the United States. Now, if you go for a website which is called Shoutcast, or another one which is called Icecast, you'll see that you can type in any artist's name because they have all of these radio stations basically lined up and ready to tune in, in the internet. Now, if I like John Mellencamp, for instance, or whatever, Britney Spears, I type in Britney Spears, and I get all the songs that Britney Spears played now or starting to.